in a thunderstorm all over the country, but we just pray for the best. People, uh, flood victims, yeah, people homes have been flooded oh by back this. Because, yeah, I'm back here, but like, whoa. Okay. Um, my video had a suddenly it was asking me to do something. It was asking me to um, install an update on my phone, the phone that I use for the live video. So it is that message that suddenly interrupted the the, the broadcast. So I'm gonna try to. So I just started a new video. And um, trying to share it. So, folks, uh, um, I'm sorry about that. Welcome back. Uh, phone was asking me to do an uh, update, but I don't want to do an update. So that was a problem, but it's okay now. I just started a new video. Ah, let's see what's happening here. Okay. Ah, let's see what's happening here. Yeah. All right. It's not so. Uh, so as I as I was saying before, we got disrupted by the the breaking transmission of our live podcast. So I, 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 I received the information last night that Representative Nangwe Slaw uh, had been taken to JFK, the John F. Kennedy Memorial Medical Center. And um, he was struggling for his life. Um, and uh, he, uh, when he was taken to JFK, his kidneys failed um, and he slipped into a coma and he remained in a coma until he passed out or he passed away. Well, he passed off in the coma that was triggered by the kidney failure. Bwaka, could you kind of close that door? Uh, what is that sound that keeps coming in and out? Is that the noise from the generator or something? Could you do something about that, please? I don't like to hear that. So, okay, okay. We, we're trying to do something about it quickly. So, number slow uh was had been struggling for years uh, with bad kidneys um he had a heart condition he also had diabetes he had them all and um what a terrible thing you know and he would come to the u.s and he would be in america for several weeks and months sometimes on end and um, his wife I spoke to her last night and she's she was very very distraught very heartbroken she was weeping and willing I, I, I reached out to her to convey my my condolences for her loss you know, and, and, and I, I felt so broken when I spoke to her, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Slaw, you know, and her, her name is Ko Kida Slaw. She's a nurse. She lives in Jersey, Trenton, New Jersey, with the children. And there was one thing she said to me, she said, Costa, the children are so young. 
you know. But you know how death is, it doesn't know when to come. It's gonna strike whenever it wants to. And uh um I wanna say uh my deepest condolences to Mrs. Cole Kido Slow, the wife of now fallen representative Jane Nangba Slaw to the children, extended family members, loved ones, friends. Have my deepest condolences. You know, to live in Liberia is a very it's a very difficult thing. And the hospitals are no good. We've known this forever. And we do nothing about it. Absolutely nothing. Governments come, governments go. When they get sick, they get flown abroad. They don't get treated in the hospitals. Liberian politicians make noise about improving the healthcare system when they're running for office. When they get to office, they don't. It's the way it is. We could change that narrative for once. But who will? You know, sometimes when I tell you that there are no guarantees whatsoever that even my party or my political camp would change the country. Some people think it's, I, I shouldn't say it. But it is the truth. Because that's what I am. I like to speak the truth. Liberia is such a miserable country. Who said we couldn't change the story? Who said we couldn't put the right amount of money into our hospitals? Who said we couldn't send our doctors abroad to specialize, get trained in places like India, in Cuba? Who said we couldn't bring Cuban doctors? specialize in various fields in medicine to train and work and transfer knowledge and skills who said we couldn't purchase the right medical equipment the best who said we couldn't we could if we had a government that truly cares we could when you get sick in Liberia it's a death sentence that is why Liberians have such low life expectancy. We don't live long. Life expectancy in Liberia is what? 65? 6-3? Something like that. In the 21st century, Liberians have one of the lowest life expectancy rates in the world. We don't live long. This is not politics. This is a reality. And it's a, it's a reality that remains a reality because we don't do anything about it. If we can take $30 million to say we are buying rice and vegetable oil and beans to distribute to 2.5 million Liberians, do you know how much $30 million can do in the healthcare sector in terms of training and sending doctors to India and Cuba to specialize in various fields of medicine and procuring high-tech medical equipment or bringing Cuban doctors to Liberia to work and transfer knowledge and skills and train our people. We can do that. But of course, maybe Henry Costa would just talk about it and if Henry Costa came to power, he would never get to do it too. That's the reality of Liberia. That is the reality of our country. This is a country in which those who live in Liberia, you can go to the hospital for malaria and they will be treating you for something else. You could go to the hospital for typhoid and they would misdiagnose you, misdiagnose you and be treating you for something else. They kill people in the hospitals in the country. Some people go to the hospitals, you just lie there on the bed, if you're lucky to get a bed, and you die. This is the Liberian reality. And we've always known this.
We never ever make the right investment in the healthcare system. We never do. It can be changed. One year, two years, we can change it. How? Send doctors abroad to specialize. Buy the equipment or bring doctors from abroad. We can do this. Oh, no, 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 no. It's not gonna, it's not gonna happen because it's idiots that seek power in the country. Small-minded idiots. And the Liberian people are content with that. Election after election, you vote for small-minded croaks. Election after election. This is an indictment on all of us. You, the voters. You, the politicians. You come to power, you do the same damn thing. You never fix the country. People die in Liberia because they don't, you know, Nangba Slaw was taking risks with his life. And as he once boasted on Facebook and rightfully so, come to think of it now that he's dead and gone, that he enjoyed quality health care in America, which is not perfect. They, they have their own issues with the health care system, inaccessible, unaffordable, but millions to millions of, of Americans. But his wife had great insurance. And he would come to America and receive quality health care in quality hospitals thanks to his wife's great insurance. But Nangba Slaw lived in Liberia. In a country where if you got sick, it was a near-death sentence. He had everything. A, a bad heart. He had bad kidneys. And he had high sugar. He had a three. And, 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 and as sad as it is, but it must be said, it was just a matter of time that Nangba Slaw would die in, in Liberia. It was just a matter of time. And there are many Nangba Slaws like that in the country. Just waiting to die. Many, many waiting to die. And we will never change the country. That is not going to wake us up because we are such mediocre people. We are such visionless people. We are such spineless people. It's not going to wake us up. No matter how many more people die from things that they could easily be saved from, we're not going to change the country. The healthcare system is going to remain the way it is. You get sick, you have a bad kidney, or if your kidneys are not good, you die. There's no dialysis treatment facility in the country. There's none. There's none. You get sick, you die. You get sick, you die. We keep moving. Nobody's bothered. When George Bear gets sick, the last time he was sick, they flew him to Abidjan to see a doctor at Pisan Hus Hus Hospital. In uh, Yamasoko. Huh? When Miguel got sick the last time, he went and he went abroad, I believe to Paris or so. It is the way it is. When they were not in government, they would have to get treated in hospitals in the country. Now that they are, they get flown abroad. So nobody's going to change the story. We are a sick country, really, really sick country. I am ashamed of my country. Terribly ashamed. There are just things that happen in Liberia that should never happen in any country on the face of the earth. In this day and age, in this 21st century, now I know we have a small budget, we don't have a lot of money, but why can't we make incremental, consistent, willful investment in improving the quality of health of healthcare in the country. And by doing that, we extend the lives of Liberians. Why can't we do that? Of course, we're not going to do that because we are a sick, stupid people. That's what we are. You know, my friend Elijah Saar posted the other day on Facebook 
that our parents have got no good advice for us, or we should not listen to our parents' advice when it comes to how we run the country. It is true. <laughs> you know what you don't need to run Liberia? Experience. Yeah. You don't need experience, the Liberian experience. My father or my uncle has nothing good to offer me. There's nothing I should listen to him about when it comes to the country. Because they destroyed the country. Their generation. And my generation... We're destroying the country too. So fellow Liberians, we're going to bury Nangwe Slaw. We're going to bury the tons of other people who have died in hospitals uh, across the country. Places they call hospitals, death camps, which is what they really are. And nothing will change. It's not going to change. <laughs> you know, and, and another party will come to power. And we are making all the talk about how bad the hospitals are in the country. How we lack trained doctors specializing in various fields. We have a problem. We know it, but we don't fix it. Because we don't love the country. And some of you don't realize it. That is a real problem. The politicians, we Liberians, we don't love the country. And it is going to be a miracle. The day we have a good, real good leader. I don't know when that day will be. I, I, don't, I don't know. What kind of people are we? We're five million people. A youthful population. Resilient people. Yet, we get governed, misruled, abused by one idiot after the other. One idiot comes to power, comes, comes to power. He gets rich. He and all his friends, they get rich. There's a scramble for wealth. They leave. Another group of idiots, they come to power too. They get, they get rich. That is the country we have. Idiots come into power. <laughs> Some people don't like the way I say it. It is the truth. It is exactly, exactly the truth. We are a country of idiots. Stupid people. Dying. Dying. Because we can put the money in the right place. We'd rather steal the money. We'd rather make deals and make the foreigners rich. Than investing in improving the quality of health in our country. Do you know Liberia has one of the highest infant mortality rates in the world? Proportionally, more children died in Liberia before they hit the age five than they do in most parts of the world. Proportionally, the highest, one of the highest infant mortality rates in the world. Do you know we also have one of the highest maternal mortality rates in the world? Proportionally, more Liberian pregnant women die in child delivery or childbirth than anywhere else in the world. Proportionally, one of the highest in the world. And it's been this way forever. <laughs> we had a woman president who didn't really fix it. And it's continued. Billions and billions were pulled into the healthcare system when Ellen was president. It didn't change. It's still broken because they didn't make the right investment. Two things. Take a few hospitals in the country. Make them specialist hospitals. Buy all the equipment they need that can be found in any hospital anywhere in the world. Take promising Liberian medical students and doctors, general practitioners, send them to India or Cuba. Let them go there for four or five freaking years. And let them specialize. And when they return, put them in hospitals. But it's not going to happen. Oh yes, it's not going to happen. Not even my government will do it. And why am I so sure? Because no idiot in the past has ever done it. And so it's not going to happen. We're going to keep dying. We're going to keep dying. Because we are a stupid people. 
And so this morning, I just want to tell you the truth. And I'm not wearing a partisan uh, cap this morning. I'm just telling you the truth about us Liberians. A country of 5 million people tremendously endowed with everything you can think about. Gold, diamond, timber. And the people lead miserable, poor lives. They die so young. We die so young in a country. The things we die from. In many, many parts of the world, people would never die from such things. The things we die from in, like, in Liberia, it is so sad. It is so sad. But that's it. Man moving, man dropping. Somebody dies today, we talk about it. Oh, they have guests in battle. They also not Then we move on. We drink beer. <laughs> that's the way we are. We are a stupid people, and I want us to, to tell that to ourselves. Hmm? We keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. There's no guarantee. All this talk you all are going to be talking today, when your government comes to power, when your political parties come to power, they're going to do the same thing, and you're going to be talking, oh, we, we can't fix a healthcare system. What kind of country is that? And nobody's going to fix it. Nobody's going to fix it. And it hurts me that we have to be governed by idiots. Idiots after idiots. It hurts me. Oh, God. It is so sad. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a shame. It's a terrible shame being a Liberian citizen. It's a, it's a terrible shame. I remember how my friend Charles Johnson died. You know? Charles Johnson loved Liberia so much. Every opportunity he got to travel, to take time off work, he would run to Liberia. And Charles went to Liberia they say he had a mild stroke. I mean, uh, he collapsed. And uh, what happened? He was taken to EWA. He was just lying there. They really didn't know what to, how, what to even do with him. You go to a Liberian hospital or to a Liberian death camp called a hospital. Uh, they wouldn't even know what your medical history is and they will scrap you on to... Uh, the one of the first things to do is that they'll give you, they'll push you on drip. That's one of the first things they do. They put you on drip, and uh, they put you on drip, and they kill you. They've killed so many people like like that. Some some people got problem with sugar, and they will go and make it worse. Put you on drip and kill you. Man, that country, Jesus Christ. Well, Mrs. Numbers Law said to me, Costa, he, he knew I used to cry on him. You got bad kidneys. You got heart problem. You got diabetes. But Numbers Law wanted to be in Liberia. He wanted to be in Liberia. In America, chances are he wouldn't be dead. Even Jules Blackwell, the NSA guy, you know, they say he had a pacemaker. He, 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 he had heart problems. He had, you know, chances are if you were in America, he would still be alive. He wanted to be in Liberia. Liberia is a death sentence. It is. Being in Liberia, it's a death sentence. And I want to break it to you, folks. It is not going to change. No, 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 no. It's not, it's not about CDC or CPP or Unity Party. UP was in power for how many years? 12 years. They did not change it. They didn't they have one of the most sophisticated presidents we've ever had. Yes, they did. Did Ellen fix it? No. Of course, if Ellen didn't fix it, you expect George Bia to fix it? Of course not. So then who's going to fix it? 
there's no guarantee that it's ever going to be fixed. And this is what I tell you. I am not going to sit here and tell you something that I don't believe myself. I don't believe that it's going to be fixed ever. I don't believe that. Here's what I know. We'll continue, we will continue to die from easily curable and preventable diseases and ailments. We will continue to die. We will continue to be a nation that will die young. We will continue to have more babies die proportionally in Liberia than they do in most countries in the world. We will continue to have more pregnant women die in childbirth than they do in many parts of the world. We will continue to die young. That is our fate because our country is governed by idiots. That is our fate. That's what I want to break to you today. Oh, but you already know, know, know that. You don't need me to tell you that. You already know that. Uh, you don't need me to tell you that librarians will continue to die young. Don't you know that already? You know that. And do you think it's going to change after jobs we have? Most likely, it will not change. Because when the officials come to power, when they get sick, they fly abroad. When they get sick, they fly abroad. Am I, uh, you know, double hell in a base of Jala? Don't say so. Don't say God forbid. There are some things you don't wish them away. You can't just simply say, God forbid. Hey, what happened? It doesn't work that way. God doesn't work that way. Are you freaking kidding, kidding me? Who told you how God works? God works when you plan to do it yourself. You don't wish seven things away. You do something about it to make it go away. You don't wish it away. Oh, God forbid. Oh, hey, we're not gonna, we will continue to die young in Liberia. That is the truth. And you need to just accept it. If you are living in America, you want to move to Liberia, your number one concern should be health care. If you have a medical condition and you want to move to Liberia, well, you need to reconsider that because you just might die the day you arrive at RIA. That's it. And then don't say, God forbid. It is your portion. It is your portion to die young as Liberians. Once you live in Liberia, it is your portion to die young. Don't say, God forbid. Uh, it is your portion. It's a reality. You know how many people die in Liberia young? Because we are a good for nothing people. And it doesn't matter what political party we are in. Whether we are in the CDC, whether we are in Unity Party or a ALP or ANC, we are just a good for nothing people. That is what we are. And there is hard evidence to that effect. One bunch of criminals after another bunch of criminals after another bunch of criminals and the country goes nowhere. That is the truth. It's a country where officials of government who can afford do not go to, host to the hospitals in the country. It's a country where <laughs> I remember when the mother of uh, Anthony Weeks was sick one time. They brought in a jet and they flew her out of the country. It cost them $50,000. They flew her to Paris. You know, they could afford. $50,000 is a fortune. Do you know how many families cannot afford even $50 to go to the hospital, let alone $50,000? That's the way the country is. I remember when Vani Sherman collapsed at the Capitol building. Do you all recall? It was a day the, a group of senators, 19 of them, were, uh, they were endorsing Vice President Boakai for the presidency. At that endorsement ceremony at this at the Capitol building, Senator Vani Sherman collapsed. Vani Sherman, they scrambled a jet quickly, brought a jet in from somewhere and flew him straight to America. And Vani Sherman was here for a few months. He received quality health.
health care. And Shema went back to the country. And in old time, Shema was on his feet. If Vani Shema was not the Vani Shema we know, with the resources that he has, Vani Shema would have most likely died. I remember when Amara Kone was Minister of Finance, there was a time he collapsed. They brought in a jet. They flew him out of the country. It is the way the country is, folks. If John Ria were to collapse right now, they would fly him out of the country. What happened recently? Latin, Deputy Minister of Administration at the Ministry of uh, Education. He was flown on a jet to Ghana. And he was on Facebook thinking, George Ria. Oh, George Ria, thank you for saving me. My kidneys failed me, but you did not fail me. Latin, Deputy Minister, Education, Foreign Administration. How many Liberians can afford to get flown out of the country? What, 0 0.00001%? <laughs> oh, my God. So, well, folks, there you have it, man. It's a terrible, terrible country. Terrible country. Terrible country. Despicable, horrible country. Here is how you can fix a healthcare system. Simple. Take 20, 30 million dollars or do it in phases every year. Put 10 million dollars in the, in the budget. Not to pay the existing doctors in the existing hospitals or to maintain them. No. It's to improve the quality. And the quality, you know how you improve the quality? In two ways. Personnel training. You send doctors to Cuba. You let them get trained in Cuba for four or five years. Liberian doctors. And then you spend money on buying the equipment. The, the, the instruments that the doctors use. I mean, you want neurologists. You want cardiologists. You want epidemiologists. You want, you name it. Any kind of doctor, we should have it. You should say, okay, we want two of each. You know, and then we build a specialist hospital. Do you know what a specialist hospital is? It's not a hospital where you go when you have typhoid or malaria. It's a hospital where you have a specialist medical need. You have a medical, you have a heart condition. You go and see a cardiologist. You have a brain problem. You go and see a, a neurosurgeon surge, or a neurologist. Or you have a nervous a, a, a problem with your nervous system or your nerve system. You you have such trained specialists in the country. Hmm? And then what do you do? You have the equipment for them. You can do that. Oh, but you could take $25 million from your foreign reserve account at the, at the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. And to map up that George Weir and Samuel Tua stole the money. But you can't spend $25, $30 million to send Liberian doctors to Cuba and India to specialize. You can't buy high-tech medical equipment. You, you, can't, you can't do those things. <laughs> what is wrong with you? You can't. Every country... People will die when they get sick. But ensure that you do all that you possibly can. And if they cannot make it, it's okay that they cannot make it. But they must not die because they cannot access quality health care. It is a human rights issue. That is how you fix the health care system. Every year put $10 million into improving the quality of health care. Not health care. The quality of health care. Send doctors abroad. Bring Cuban doctors to work in the hospital. They're cheap. Very, very cheap. Amen. How much more can I say this? Of course, the people on, our, on my side politically will say, yeah, of course you are right. But guess what? By the time we come to power, to hell with that nonsense. Who's going to face hospitals here in Liberia? When I get sick, eh? when I get sick, I can go abroad. What's going to fit the hospital here? What do I, what do I care? Damn, my children are going to the hospital here. Yeah? I, can, I can fly my children out of, out of the country. That is the mentality. When the voters 
who vote for me when they get sick, they die. Who gives a damn about them? That is what they tell you. That's essentially what they're saying. When they refuse to make the investment that needs to be made to improve the quality of healthcare in the country, that is essentially what they're telling you. When you get sick, you die. The hell with you. Who the hell are you? There are some other voters there that will vote for me. That is the Liberian reality. You get sick, you die. So, I've said enough about this this morning. I'm going to move on to something else. It's not going to change. It's going to remain this way until God knows when. Brother Mumu Johnson of the COP and the Voice of Justice he lost his father in Bucking County yesterday. But Brother Mumu Johnson, I want to say uh, my condolences to you on the loss of your father. Uh, may Allah grant him uh, a bugger, what you call it? I, ajana or Ijana? Ejene. Ejene. Which is what? Par paradise, right? Yeah, that's a heaven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. That's par paradise. That's, that's, that's where Allah is. In yeah. heaven. In paradise. And uh, uh, a couple of people here celebrate their birthday today. I also want to convey my con my condolences to the Gongolo family for the loss of their mother. She passed away a few days ago, uh, and she uh, the funeral arrangements are being made. Um, I want to convey my condolences to. In particular, Councillor Tiamon Gonglo, uh, uh, Madame Edith Gonglo, where uh, Kerbo Gonglo, and uh, it's a very large family, and uh, I want to say very uh, my 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 sympathy for the passing of your mother. I spoke to Mr. Kerbo Gonglo. Yes, yes, yesterday. And I, and I already reached out to Madam Edith, where, uh, Edith Gonglo where, a few days ago to say sorry to her for the loss of their mother. And I uh, wanted to just say that. Um, I, I also want to wish some people here today their birthday. Uh, Auntie Pat, Auntie uh, Pat Banks, the wife of Mr. T. Banks. Auntie Pat, you celebrate your birthday today, the 1st of July. I want to say happy birthday to you. Uh, I want to wish you many, many more years to come. Uh, uh, Mr. Charles Keddy of Staten Island, New York. You celebrate your birthday today, Mr. Charles Keddy. Happy birthday to you. Uh, Henry B. Carter, my name, my, my namesake of 77 community. Henry Carter, you celebrate your birthday today. Happy birthday to you as well. And uh, yesterday, the president fired uh, Madam Jimamu Wolokoli. Of course, uh, if you're surprised, then something must be wrong with you. I am not surprised. I expected this to happen. Uh, Jimamu Wolokoli was threatened. She was uh, threatening dangerous grounds, uh, criticizing the CDC, in fact, criticizing the government. And, and so this was expected. So that's nothing that surprises me at all. Now today is the 1st of July and by this time, uh, the new budget, Bwaka, the new fiscal budget for 2020-2021, according mm -hmm. to the law, the new budget should be should come into effect beginning today. That is the law. It is the law yeah. of the land. But interestingly, Bwaka, the budget has not even been submitted by the president. To the legislature. Sure. Mm -hmm. So today is when the budget should actually come in, into effect. The, the 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 old budget was supposed to have ended on the 30th of June, which was yesterday. The new yeah. budget was supposed to come into effect today, but that's not uh, that's not happening because the Ministry of Finance apparently has not even finished drafting the budget. 
So the president has not submitted the budget to the legislature. Yeah. Mm. And so we don't know. And, and, and interestingly, the legislators, uh, they've not been very uh, serious about performing their, their duty with regards to the budget, how it performs, uh, quarterly budget reports that should be made to them. Uh, they, they, they don't do that. They, they don't demand that the Ministry of Finance uh, make those quarterly budget re re reports. Uh, the media budget review uh, is supposed to be done and then a report submitted, not just to the legislature, but to the Liberian public. We don't access those things. This government doesn't make those things public. We don't know how the budget performs in terms of uh, re revenue generation and, and, and expenditure. We don't really know because the reports are not made and the lawmakers, a few of them would whine and, 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 and complain about it, but really they take no real action against Samuel Tue. And, and, and so the Tue is having a free ride. And so today is when the new budget to come into effect. But the budget in its draft form has not even been submitted. So we can't even say we are, we are expecting a budget anytime soon. And here's what mm -hmm. they're going to be doing. According to the budget law, when the budget has not been approved, by law, they can spend one-tenth of whatever they propose allotments are while the budget is being debated. But the budget has not even been submitted to be debated, right? Yeah. That's the point. So how can you spend one-tenth of what has not even been uh, drafted? What has not even been proposed? If you propose to spend, what, $10 million on, uh, say, procuring gasoline for government ministries and agencies, you can say, well, you are allowed by law to spend one-tenth of that while the budget is being debated and it, it's been scrutinized if they ever do that, something which we all know they, 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 they don't do. And yes, well, yes, yes, what's going to happen? They're going to delay, perhaps deliberately, and then submit the draft budget at some point, and then the lawmakers are going to pass it in a 4G fashion, boy. Mm. That's what these idiots do. They're going to pass the budget in a 4G fashion. Perhaps they're going to pass it by resolution. They're going to say, all oh, those who support the budget, yeah, 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 yeah. It is so ordered. But it has been passed. Without even going to to it. My man, that is what they do. That is what they do. They don't go through the budget. They don't scrutinize it. They don't. Uh, one twelfth. I'm sorry. It's actually one one twelfth. Now one yeah. One twelfth. That's the law. They spend one twelfth of whatever is approved in the in the budget. Yeah. So they will be spending the one twelfth which is supposed to tie them over until the draft budget is submitted. And then they're going to just say, yeah, nay, nee. who wants a money budget? Yeah, nay, nee. yeah, bang, bang, man. They pass the damn budget. Whether their money, there's money there to improve the quality of health care, they idiots don't care. Whether there's money there to send Liberian medical students abroad to study, they don't really care. They're going to pass the budget. They get sick. They die. If they get sick, if they got money, they fly out of, the, out of the country. That's it. Oh, that's it. So yeah, one twelve. Thank you, guys. Thank you. That's what they're going to do. So they're waiting. Whenever Samuel 12 brings, brings the budget, they will just say, yeah, who are in support? Yeah, yeah. And then they knock the gamble. Or they will go into executive session to pass the budget. They go into a second session, they pass the budget, quick, 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 quick. It's done. They, they can't, they can't, they can't also. Oh, my man, I bought man. We're we'll finna, we we'll finna with the budget. That's what we do in our country. So it's an irresponsible people. That's what we are. You know, that I remember a few years ago, I saw this thing. The government of Sierra Leone spends, what percentage? About half, about 50% of his budget on recurring expenditure. Salaries. Gasoline, cars, trips, and stuff like that. Just tra traditional expenses. And then the other 50% is spent on investment in infrastructure and healthcare and you name it, Walker. Okay? Now, mm. the government of Ghana, the Ghanaian government spends uh, about 74%. 
Yes, well, I got 74%. Uh, 74% of his budget is spending on improving the country. And uh, it's just about what? 26% of the budget is what they spend on uh, recurring expenditure. And the Ghanaian government, they have a budget of about 13, 14 billion dollars. So wow. most of that money is spent here, 13, 14, 14 billion. And your budget is what? 500, 520 million? Well, their budget is about, uh, their budget is about 15 times what your budget is, Bokai. About 15 times. And they spend more of their money, uh, most of their money, they spend on infrastructure, roads, hus hus hospitals, education. A significant chunk of the Ghanaian budget is spent on education. And, and primary education is very, very important. And they spend a lot of it. Your budget, uh, you spend 91% of your budget on recurrent expenditure. Now, folks, you, you see why the countries are doing well, and some of you sit there and say, Hey, man, Ghana, look at Ghana, man. But they're not stupid like us. The Ghanaians spend 74% uh, uh, of their budget on infrastructure, on education, on health care. They spend only 26% on salaries and cars and trips and stuff like that. You in Liberia, on the other hand, you spent the last budget. What did we spend on recurring expenditure? What guy? We spent 91% of our budget mm. on and we spent only 9%. 9% of our budget is what we spend on infrastructure, on development. 9%. A country that spends 91% of its budget on salaries, gasoline, foreign trips abroad, the DSA. You think a serious country? A country that spends 91% of the budget on recurring expenditure. Serbia spends 50%. Ghana spends 26%. And you spend 91%. Now, how the hell do you think you're going to ever be the Ghana? How the hell do you think you're going to ever try to catch up with Sierra Leone, which is doing much, much better than you are? You are never going to be able to do that. You're going to have to have serious political will to say, hey, we're going to cut our budget. We're going to cut recurring expenditure. First of all, there's too many people working in the damn government. We have to sack a lot of people. We're going to find thousands and thousands of people working in the government. I got a small government got 70,000 workers. Smaller government with 70,000 employees. Every freaking money your payroll is $28, $30 million. Are you kidding me, Borger? Hmm. Your payroll alone is over half of your national budget. Let's multiply 30 million, 30 times 12. Okay. To know mm -hmm. what your payroll is as a government. Just your payroll alone. 30 times 12. Let's do let's do the math. You're not a serious country. And if our people come to power and they repeat the same nonsense, the country will remain the same. That's 360 million dollars. Mm -hmm. You you yeah, 360 million. That's our payroll alone. You now you deduct 360 million from 520 million. You want to know what's left, right? 360 million from 520 million. You are left with 160 million million dollars. Okay. Yeah. What percentage is three is 360 out of 500 million? We want to know what what percentage of your of your of your budget? Seriously, folks, can you imagine that? Hmm? Can you imagine that? This is what we do. Look at how we spend the money. Huh? Look at how we spend the money. That's why we don't do, we are not doing good at all. You are, you are, you spend almost 60% of your budget on salary, on salaries alone. Salaries not for doctors. Though. You don't pay your doctors well. What stops you from paying medical doctors ten, fifteen thousand dollars a month? Do you know how many specialists Liberian doctors are there in the United States and in other parts of the world, Waka? Yeah. You could bring these doctors back home. Just yesterday, Stephen Johnson and I were talking about, about this. You could bring these specialist doctors, they're good, good Liberian doctors abroad. You could say to them, hey, you know what? We know you work in hospitals in America and other parts of the world, and you make a lot of money in America. Doctors make so much freaking money. And here's what we could do. We could bring you back here 
we could pay you fifteen, twenty thousand dollars a month, and we will help you settle back in. You 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 can ship all your personal effects, your cars, your clothes, and you name it, everything, all your personal effects, absolutely duty free. And then, Boca, and then you don't you are well paid. You pay doctors, special doctors, more than lawmakers, useless lawmakers. You should pay doctors. You should have a program to say all Liberian doctors. This is a website. An operation recruit Liberian doctors abroad. Specialist doctors. We're not just talking about general practitioners. We're talking about neurosurgeons, cardiologists, epidemiologists. You name them, Boaka. You name them. And we said, we want you to come back home. And so we built a website. What do you do? You go on the website. You put your resume. And then we go, we have a team that verifies. We hire a company to verify your credentials. Okay? Once you are vetted and you and your pass, we invite you to the country. We help you settle back in. If you've been out of the country for too long, we help find a house for you to stay in. Or we build an estate for you to stay in. And what do we do, brother? We deploy these doctors across the hospitals across the country. We buy the equipment that they need. We should be paying doctors from abroad 15000 But we pay, uh, uh, what do we pay our doctors? We pay them what? $1,000, $2,000. And when we pay one lawmaker $17,000. <laughs> what does that tell you? We are a stupid people. I just want us to accept that and clap for ourselves. We are a very stupid, that's what we do. Do you know how many times doctors have had to protest for their salaries to be paid? Do you know how many times? It is so sad. It is extremely, extremely sad. And this is a library reality. Do you know how many good doctors there are abroad? Recently, a Liberian doctor. What's her name? Helen Cooper. Sam Darcy, what's that woman's name? Is she Helen, Helen Cooper? Helen Cooper was just appointed to a very big job. Huh? Yeah, what's her, what's her name? I think she's at Johns Hop, Hopkins. She was just appointed. Lisa Cooper. That is her name. Lisa Cooper. She's a professor of medicine. She has a PhD in MPH. She was recently appointed. She teaches at the best hospital in the whole wide world. What? Okay? Johns Hopkins is the best hospital, not in America, but in the entire world. Why? Okay. And a Liberian doctor, she teaches that. Lisa Cooper. This is her profile. I'm reading. Mm -hmm. She's a Bloomberg Distinguished Professor, Equity in Health and healthcare professor of medicine. She speaks French and English very proficiently. Lisa Cooper. This is this is this is a woman, brother. Yep. She is also the James F. Fry's professor of medicine in the, in the division of general internal medicine and a co-faculty member in the Welch Center for Prevention, Epidemiology, and Clinical Research. She holds a joint appointment. In the school of mercy, Dr. Cooper was born in Liberia, West Africa, where she witnessed the effects of social deprivation on the health of many of her fellow citizens and developed a passion for her career in medicine and public health. This is a woman, brother. Wow. Yep. She is. She has just been appointed recently as the director of Johns Hopkins Center for Health Equity. She's a director of health equity at Johns Hopkins University, the best hospital in the entire world. A Liberian. A Liberian. We could come to this woman. She's probably making three, four hundred thousand thousand dollars a year. We, we, we could come to this woman and say, look, Dr. Lisa Cooper, we want you to come home. You are an epidemiologist. Hmm? We want you to come home. Come help us build our health, our health healthcare system. Come visit. We will bring her home first. 
Do an assessment. Get a team. Tell us what we need. Hmm? You don't have to be no damn partisan or no damn unity party or CDC. Come, Dr. Cooper. We will give you $50,000. You come home, do an assessment, and tell us what you need. We'll pay for your plane ticket. We'll put you up in a hotel. we we'll assign a car to you. we we'll set up a small team of people. Do an assessment for, for a couple of weeks. After that, then we we'll follow her, her guidance. And it's not just her alone. There are tons of other Liberian health professionals around the world. And we said to her, look, Doc, we can't pay you $300,000, but you are a Liberian. We can pay you $200,000 a year. Come back and help us. Come home. Come help us. But we're not doing it. We're not, we're not doing it. But we'll pay fools, damn fools, to be represented, to be, set, to be senators. We'll pay them $200,000 a year. That's what we'll do. My man, we are a sick country, man. Let's go to the phone lines and take some calls. Then. We are a sick country. And if you don't know that, then you are sick too. Let's go to the phone lines. Hmm. But they will want to get a woman to be Munya. They say they will want her to be CDC. One or two. She was John CDC first. 0702 102 080601038306001038306001038306001038306001038306001038306001038306001038306001038306001038306001038306001038306001038306001038306001038306001038306001038306001038306001038306001038306001038306001038306001038306001038306001038306001038306001038306001038306001038306001038306001038306001038306001038306
Okay. Mm. Okay. Thank you so much. That would take uh that's deep. My, my boy now on this line. Uh my boy now, good morning, welcome. Morning, morning, my boy now. Yeah. First of all, I want to say sorry to Mama Johnson, Philip Johnson for the for the loss of his father. And secondly, I want to say thank you to our friends, Danny Australia. We highly appreciate you guys are doing well. You guys are really doing well for us. I want to say thank you. And what I want to say is to the Beku Beku and his group. Look, all that thing done in Costa, even when we come to power, our own people, for the health system part, the thing they want to do for the health system, that they can they, they, they do different things with. That ain't Joshua worrying about or making election. Joshua all over the place want to see this election passing by not taking computer here, doing all the work here in the for 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 him to make the election. But let me say I'll come here to him. And he said he could man a cool woman. I challenge him, that he want to do when I know. I won't get out that county and show him a face. The power what he can do to convince the people that when he said that, when he took it, then everybody go and say, I'm going get it. I already know where it is. So many people go and say, let me hear it. But you know what I'm saying? That county, you didn't want to get it from one day, I will bring it to me. Because they ask you all day. The gentleman here, I'm going to go down, 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 down. What kind of high message is this? The guy got number of Johnson paying people from Johnson Street to the other place to two schools at home. And you to Bobo Johnson and your interactor or your police. You're getting when you're close to I don't know what ever to chapa you more yet. Because no bad one person chap. Every country that won't tell me everybody comes in. And say rebel are more rebel than you are a rebel in the country. So I challenge your and you say you're close to us, you know, and when we go to your peer, what's your trying? You're trying that when you want to talk, you won't get to talk up for that. Expressing of <laughs> let's take another person from this line. Good morning. Good morning, Pastor. Yeah, good morning. Yeah, where you calling from? I'm David D. Today calling from Saint. Okay, David, welcome. Yes. You know, I I listen to Pastor like this. So much is a problem for the truth. I do. I do. It be hundred percent. But for me, I am not disappointed about. The 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 that we is uh 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 the floor. I'm gonna talk on the media office when you get to the government sit back on the floor where that for his children and and his wife to live here. And he has done let's see his children in the West. And he was representing the people of Sando including that we are not. So for me, these are the things that all all can use to uphold the the, the wicked people. You said a great night system for the children to live in, so it is good to do here. One night you couldn't resign, and one because you couldn't live in, 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 in America. For a matter of you here taking that fair money to put your children. Therefore, the place that you said for him to, to live, or the place you said for him to die. For me, I, 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 I'm not blessed for, for, for that matter. You just okay. see that people are doing to all the team, maybe in school. But thank God that God is showing the seven years. No, my brother. No, my brother, we will not say that. Thank you, Baga. Let him, let him, let him, let him go, please. Baga, ah, uh, Baga, said, let the man go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what he is saying is not right. It is not right. Nangbe Slaw was a human being, regardless of the things he said. He's gone. He's free. Nangbe Slaw is free. When the dead, when the when the dead leave this earth, they don't have any. They don't have any sickness anymore. Nagbas Law has no more illness. He's free. It is his family that is grieving. His young children. His dear beloved wife. So that is too mean to say. We will not allow you to use our platform to spew that kind of hateful, very, very uh, insensitive uh, 
message. I'm sorry. We apologize to our audience for that. I know we speak the very honest, frank truth here, but no. Nangwe Slaw was a lawmaker, yes. Did he try to do much to improve the healthcare system? No, he didn't. But does that mean we should say those things about him that he was this, that he deserved to go? No, no, no. He did not. The system let Nangwe Slaw down. The very healthcare system let him down. It let him down. Should that serve as an inspiration to others to do better? Yes, it should. Should that wake the hell, wake them the hell up? Yes, I hope it does. But sadly, it will not wake them up. But my heart bleeds for all of you. The families, the loved ones who lose their family members and their loved ones in the death camps across Liberia called hospitals. So we'll not let you say that here on our platform. Mrs. Nangwe Slaw is a wonderful woman called Kidal Slaw. She's a nurse working in the United States. She's got children. They're grieving. I spoke to the woman yesterday. It was a difficult conversation. It didn't last long for over just a little over a minute. She was grieving for herself and more importantly for her children who are so young. And their father is gone. Now say what you may about Nangwe Slaw. He could have lived here in his days. But he chose to be in, like, in Liberia. He chose to be there. He had all those medical conditions. Bad kidneys. Bad heart. Diabetes. Yet he chose to be in Liberia. Could he have done more as a lawmaker? Could he have sponsored a bill to improve the healthcare system? Yes, he could have. But should we say mean things about him now that he's dead? No, we shouldn't. Our respect for the family members. Those children. His wife, who are grieving. It's a difficult thing, folks. It's a difficult thing. So my sympathy to the family. My sympathy to the loved ones. Bagai will take two more calls, and then we'll take our guest on the line from Canada, Mr. Chris Dennis. Two more calls, Bagai. Are you there, Bagai? Yeah. yeah, I'm, 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 I have to come by because I'm here. Oh, God, let's take another person. Yeah, let's take another person, man. You came on a wonderful live show. Yeah, welcome. Yeah, good morning, uh, Boyka, and morning, Costa. This is Isaac calling from uh, from Finland. Yeah. You, you see, the thing is that concerning the death of Nagusha, it's a very sad thing. But just as Costa has been saying, what kind of life or lesson does this teach us? We keep repeating the same thing and expecting different results. Our healthcare system is completely dilapidated. I also just lost my cousin two weeks ago because of the same thing, dilapidated healthcare system. So those lawmakers that are alive, are they willing to make a change? No. You know? No. So as much as we are in sympathy with his bereaved wife and his children, but he made some very nasty statements. Very nasty statements about the country. And he was a lawmaker. What did he do to change it? Nothing. You know? So it's a sad, but we 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 will extend our condolence to his wife and his family. No? Okay. So thank you for the show. Thank you. Let me wrap up with Noah Zau Gibson on this line. Noah, good morning and welcome to the show. Yeah, good morning, Wakai. Good morning, Costa. Today, I'm happy to be the last, but not the least. Uh, I want to begin by extending my condolence to Momo the Critical Johnson for the loss of his father. He has complained on the father health status for some time now. I'm so much uh, sad this morning to hear that he lost his father. Finally, I think it's very sad. You know, the reality is just the reality. There's no way you can put it. I think people should get away, people should learn to get away uh, from those decorated comments. When you see it bad, you must say that it, it will be good. No, that's just the reality. It is bad, it's bad. Until it can get better, it's bad. And I want to say that the next government coming, Trust me, we will be more critical on you. And you think we're critical on jobs we are? Wait and see on the income to power. Because we can't continue with the same old thing. When will that get there? So all right now, we are nearing our army. Mean, we, we're aging. So we didn't have a good life too long when we were young. Our children coming again should be in the same form amount we are living. No, we can't live like that. 
He's a businessman, he's a Liberian, lives in Canada, uh, and, and, and he's, uh, he's, 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 he's built, he has a business, and uh, he's doing good. And we're trying to see how we can lend our platform to help expose his business to those who need it. They provide a cable TV service, you know, portable, it's, it's, a, it's great, great. I mean, and it's cheap. Uh, cheap is not the word, it's affordable. Is way affordable and the quality is just as good. I mean, imagine paying way less for something that is just as good as what you have, or even a little better than what you currently have. And that is what it is, Buckeye. So let's see. I'm trying to get Brother uh, Chris Dennis here, Christopher Dennis, uh, trying to connect with him here so that uh, we can put him on. Uh, sorry, trying to add. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. If, if you're, you're just only with a door, you you I don't hear the noise. Sure, we uh when we you have a lot of the generator door and a lot of uh, studio door, so beautiful. It's okay now. When you're setting up your uh, when you're setting up your your your, your thing. You don't draw smoothie, man. Look at your man, man. My man, my man, my man, nice scene, man. Yeah, we don't, you don't have to be the AC ever. Yeah, so you have to draw smoothie quickly, so okay. Yeah, but and but but y'all already got the AC. Why don't we bring it install it? And y'all took it down and carry it to, to, to that place. Don't call the name of that place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The installment fee, so you have to that. Uh, <laughs> installment fee. <laughs> You're not telling what is it to install it before. How many air conditioners y'all got there though? For the, oh, we have four, but now we're using only one, so the three is on the front. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, but listen though, uh, ain't, ain't y'all need one in the uh, one in the studio and one in the where? In the other office. Yeah, yeah. Or in the conference room. Where are you gonna put the other one? In the conference room. Okay, cool. I'm trying to find our guest here, Walker. That's what I'm trying to do. I don't know, for some reason he's not showing up here on my list. Ah, uh, God. Okay. Uh, hold on, Walker. For some reason he's not showing up on my thing. I may have to hang up with you. Okay. And now, Chris, yes, sir. call me in exactly 30 seconds. Yeah, you, you call me. Okay, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to hang up with you so that he can call me, and then I will call you back and add you, huh? Okay. All right, cool. So take right. one call. Why, why do that? Chris. Yes. Okay, you are there. Crystal clear, you are. Uh, all right, hold, hold on. I'm trying to call Roots back. I'm trying to reconnect with studio. And, uh... <coughs> yeah, Chris? Yeah, what okay. uh, Can you hear Chris? 
Not yes, yet. Can I, not, can I, Chris? Yeah, hi, uh, brother. Good morning. Okay, I'm getting here now. Okay, wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, Christopher A. Dennis Jr., uh, good to have you this morning on our show. And um, uh, Chris, as I've said, uh, we were expecting him a few days ago. Unfortunately, uh, we had an issue we didn't come on. It was our fault, not Chris's fault, but ours. And so we, we've sorted that out. And, and as you may have listened, we, today is the official launch of, uh, uh, of, 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 the, of, of the, his company's amazing service, the product uh, that they're providing. There's, there's, of course, they sell the gadgets the, as, as well as the service. And so Chris is on our show this morning. Uh, and, and, and we just want to have that uh, conversation with, with him and officially launch it. Uh, Global Net ITV it's, it's amazing. I'm gonna post the flyers. Uh, you can enjoy low cost, uh, no hidden fees, uh, cable service uh, from major news channels, uh, TV shows, movies, Premier uh, Soccer Leagues, and NBA football and more. Uh, they provide the best in tele television, and. Um, you can save a lot of money, uh, save as much as $3,000 a year. Uh, their subscription is very, very affordable, and I think it's flat rate. So it's six months, it's 96 bucks for six months. You do the math, why? Split that up. And uh, 12 months is $176. And I know it works because Chris sent me uh, a package. I, he set it up, helped me set it up. Very simple steps. And it works. Now, Chris, let me stop talking and bring you on. Let's talk about Global Net ITV. Tell us a little bit about the company first. Tell us a little bit about yourself first and the company. And then uh, we'll go ahead and do the, 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 the official launch. All right. Uh, thank you very much uh, for having me this morning. And, and also thanks uh, to your... Uh, uh, studio uh, colleagues there, and also uh, thanks for uh, the your viewers uh, for uh, listening up. Anyways, uh, like you said, I'm Chris Dennis and uh, resides in uh, Windsor, Canada. Uh, and um, basically, I'm an IT uh, professional, and I've been into the information technology space for about uh, about 21 years now. Um, and um, Global Net ITV started about six years ago when um, I realized that there was uh, a better way that uh, we can watch television. And as you know, across uh, the US, Canada, uh, you know, cable companies are charging uh, far, far more uh, for services that we should be able to use and much more affordable. So I started Google at uh, ITV uh, about six years ago, and we started off in Canada uh, and across Canada, and we uh, also launched in the US uh, two years after. Uh, and we've been growing, um, and today we are pretty much in um, Europe, um, and we're starting another base in uh, the United Kingdom. So Global and ITV, uh, we provide um, superior television services uh, anywhere there from your live TV, uh, premium sports, uh, we got content for kids, um, as well as uh, local channels in the US, Canada, uh, and, and Europe. We also uh, are working uh, with partners in um, Ghana, um, we're partly in Ghana, uh, partly in Nigeria, um, and partially in Liberia, which we are also working on um, establishing. But today, we want to talk more about uh, about our rebranding um, of our company and how we can expand our clientele and provide affordable services uh, to our value customers. That's that's wonderful, Chris. Now let's talk about the actual uh, service. How does it work? 
Uh, lots of people are already asking what it is in the United States. Yes, it's in the United States. It can work. It, it can work basically anywhere, right? Correct. So, um, I mean, um, why else would it be called Global Net TV? Correct. <laughs> yes, that's correct. Um, so, one of the, uh, the most uh, distinctive things that separates uh, Global Net TV from other uh, uh, cable services across uh, Canada and the U.S. is our services is pretty much uh, mobile. So that means you, uh, once you have our service and sign up for the service, um, you can take our service anywhere across the world. Um, the major thing you need to have is internet connectivity uh, and you should be on the go. Um, so our services are pretty much uh, across in most states in the U.S. We do also have uh, agents in the U.S. that also, um, you know, resell our services. That's wonderful. Now, um, the way it works is that, I, so I spoke with Chris. Oh. Uh, I spoke with Chris a few weeks ago, and uh, he was introduced to me by a, a friend, and, 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 and I was pretty impressed. And when I spoke to him, I was even more impressed. And so Chris immediately mailed out a parcel to me. And this package contained the, um, the equipment. Now, they're not huge equipment. Very light, very simple, easy to set up. It comes with a remote, a gadget, and you plug it into your TV, and you hook it up to your Wi-Fi. And you're good to go. Yeah. Cool. Now, Chris, so, so basically, uh, I want people to be able to understand exactly how they can get it, what they need, what kind of internet service they need to have in order for it to work, and how much money it saves them. First of all, question number one, because we got to ask some clear pointer questions that I imagine our listeners would like to ask, right? Correct. Number one. For those of you who are asking whether it works in my state, whether it works in that state, it works anywhere in the world as long as you have internet access. Is that correct, Chris? Yes, that's correct. It, it works uh, across the globe. And uh, like you asked, uh, I, I skipped, I uh, missed that question um, uh, when you mentioned how it works. So our services work in just uh, four basic steps. So the first step is to order um, our package. So normally we do a quick um, a technical, um, I would say, diagnostics with our customers. So the first thing that you need to do is to have a proper internet connectivity and the minimum bandwidth that you need to have in order to adequately and effectively, efficiently um, use our service is you have to have need, you need at least about 40 megabytes of uh, internet connectivity speed. And that will be your download. So no, normally we have to run a speed test with our customers, and it's just you know pretty much quick. You know, uh, within a minute you know. Yeah, um, you did it with me. Is. Within a minute, yeah. I was able to go on and, and and test my internet speed, and I was qualified. Correct. Yes. So once we determine that, and the next thing is you um, um, purchase our equipment. So our equipment is one hundred and fifty dollars for the equipment. Um, and we mail the equipment to you. It comes pre-activated, and we don't need to go to your house. Uh, we don't send any technician at your house. So you receive the equipment, um, and then the three pretty easy steps to do is power on your device, plug it into your um, television, and connect your internet uh, to our device. Our device is connecting through both wireless, if you have wireless in your house, which most people do, or otherwise you can connect through the hardwire. So in the package, we do have an uh, Ethernet cable that you can plug into your modem and plug into our device. And once you do that, uh, we activate your service for you. Within five to ten minutes, you're up and running with our service. Folks, that's it. Just as simple as he explained. And I went through it uh, over the phone with him, and it was done. So once you have internet service, say for example, most, most people have internet and it comes with a package with their cable. Uh, so they have cable and they have internet with the same service prov provider. But there is an option 
to have only one. Right, Chris? Yeah, that's correct. You may choose to only have internet without the cable. And that saves you a lot of money. And now you can use their package or their service uh, on the, that internet service that you already have. So that's going to save you a lot of money. And now walk us through that, Chris. How does that work exactly? Um, yes. Yeah, so once you have uh, internet at home, which most people do have, um, so our package, once you buy um, our uh, units, which is $150, um, we do have at, at this time running uh, a promotion. So you get one month free of subscription, which you have the ability to um, try it on service, enjoy the service uh, within one month. And also, I just wanted to let your uh, um, audience know that uh, we do not have any type of contract because most companies um, today are locking people into contracts. So these are the basic things that separate us from most companies. You don't have any contracts. We don't send you any bill. We have only two subscriptions. So you have, uh, we have the six months package, uh, which you mentioned, for $96. So once you pay that $96, you're activated for the entire six months. And 10 days before your six months subscription is over, you get a message on your television screen telling you that your subscription is about to end in 10 days. So you get reminded every day until the last day. We also have a one year package, which is $176 for the entire year. And again, you get notified at the end, close to 10 days to the end of your subscription uh, that your package is about to get expired. So um, that's how package work. And again, the uh, product itself is $150. And that's all you need. So roughly, what we're trying to do is So, so Chris, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Let me hold, hold you there. So for $96 for six months, that would be $16 a month. Yes, just around there. That would be correct. And roughly, how, how many channels are we talking about here? Because I, I was, when I activated my... I got CNN, I got Al Jazeera, BBC, and Fox News, M and, uh, and MSNBC, and you name it, all the channels basically people have here. So how many channels are we talking about here exactly? Well, roughly, um, we, we have around the range of about 3,000 to 3,500 channels. And that range from all of your major news channels to um, kids' content, as well as um, local news channels um, and uh, one of the beauty of our services we do provide services uh, not only in English but we have content as well in French um, Spanish uh, uh, and Italian and we're working on other languages as well so it's much more a multi-platform that um, you know viewers who also you know want to watch content in other uh, uh, languages as well but um, to answer that question, we have pretty much about more than 3,000 channels. Okay. So, folks, there you have it. For $96, you can get a subscription for six months. That's 16 bucks a month. And uh, several days before your subscription expires, message, a message is going to pop up on your television screen for several days running reminding you that your subscription is about to expire and therefore you can renew it for 16 bucks a month all you need is internet now folks some folks are asking you know how the internet in liberia is terrible some folks are asking does it work in liberia are there customers currently using it in liberia yes uh, that uh the, the answer is yes so we started a test pilot of you know a uh, select uh, individuals who already have internet connectivity um, at the home. So we've uh, tested uh, with those folks. A again, it was just a test pilot that we were trying to do. And what happened is uh, those folks that we identified um, apparently end up taking you know the service because it works pretty well. Um, I understand that the internet connectivity in Liberia is, is still a niche uh, uh, um, space in Liberia, but those who currently have their services with uh, uh, um, Nutepco and Orange as well, um, they're using our service and they're pretty happy with this service so far. 
So you have people who are subscribers of Liptepo and Orange Internet Service, and they are on your they are, they are hooked up to your service. That's wonderful. That's correct. Okay, now folks were asking for your uh, website on on the live feed, so I'm I'm typing it there as we speak, and it's global net itv uh dot com yeah, right no. correct okay good 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 now folks i just typed the website there the url you can go and look it up i'm going to pin it if you click on it it's going to take you straight to the website it's got their phone number there you can get in touch with them and everything is right there online that's wonderful now, Chris, it took me just a few minutes on the phone with you to get this whole thing set up. And in a few minutes, I had I was watching CNN, which is my favorite news channel, by the way. And uh, But I had an option to watch several other channels, and that's for 16 bucks a month. Now, so right. basically, uh, people can go onto the site. The phone numbers are there. They are working. And they can order the package from Canada, which is just like ordering it from anywhere here in the, in the U.S. Very easy to mail out. And uh, is the, the, the mailing fee, is it inclusive in the package? Um, so, so the mailing fee is, is, is not included. Um, uh, but uh, I, I would say, you know, normally when you order products online, um, you normally will pay for uh, the shipping and handling um, so that's the reason why we want to make sure that once our customer order the product, we normally deliver within uh, three to five business days. Um, um, but what we're going to do today, since uh, we're, we're on a wide uh, lunch uh, to reach out more customers, we'll be um, um, doing a free shipping today. This is as exclusive uh, just uh, through the uh, Costa Show. So we'll be doing some exclusive uh, shipping, at least with uh, the first 100 customers so far. Now, Chris, I have another question. Uh, people are wondering, how can they pay? Uh, is there a platform online on your website where somebody can go and pay their, sub their subscription fee? Their subscription fee? Yes, correct. So on our website, once you go onto the website and place your order, um, you have option to uh, use our credit card processing. Uh, these are debit card processing. Otherwise, we also take payments through uh, Cash App as well as uh, Zeal. That's wonderful. Now, Chris, there's another issue. The, the fundamental you said is to have a certain uh, uh, a required minimum internet speed. And that, you said, is 40 meg megabytes per second? Yeah, 40 megabytes per second. And, and, how, do you, and, and, and how do you test that to make sure you, you have that done? required in a speed right so just in 30 seconds there um and that is very important so most most uh folks have internet service at, at their home and what happened is they are not aware that probably the internet connectivity is is the speed is very low so as long as they, they can browse get on facebook get on on the browser they feel that the services is fast so what i normally do is if, if you're on a computer, you just went to um, speedtest.net uh, and you can run your speed right from there. It pops up on the screen. You, you can get on go like I did with you. Otherwise, if you're on your phone, add an Android phone or an iPhone, um, you can just uh, go into the Play Store or the uh, Apple Store or the Google Store, download uh, speed test. Uh, you can just type the word speed test, one word, and you will see the option there to download. Uh, the uh, speed test app, and you can just run that speed test. Mm -hmm. So you can run your speed test yourself. So uh, yes. as Chris said, go to uh, your your browser, your search engine, and just type in speedtest.net, and you just click. And then after a while, it tells exactly what your speed is. And if your speed is 40 megabytes per second and above, then you're good to go. Then you can definitely get hooked on to the Global Net ITV and begin to enjoy affordable uh, television service. That's that's yeah. wonderful. Now somebody uh, is asking, uh, you know, somebody is asking, what kind of platform are you using for people to provide their credit card information to you? 
I mean, like the bank card. I mean, not necessarily give you the information to, to pay. What kind of uh, payment processing platform are you using that people can trust to go online and pay their monthly or their bi yearly fee? Okay, so um, I used, uh, we used uh, uh, PayPal in the past, uh, and the reason why we switched was because we were having a huge overhead cost. So today we're using uh, a company called Square, which is, is used globally, uh, and Square... And Square is secure as well, very secure. Yeah, Square is a very secure uh, merchandise that process a lot of different companies' uh, uh, products, so that's what we're using. Good. And they take care, takes care of the uh, payment processing entirely. Wonderful. Now, folks, this is an entirely it is, this is entirely a television service. They don't provide internet service, so that, so that means you're going to have to have your own internet service. Say, for example, most people in the U.S. in Europe, they get both the internet and their um, TV, the cable, from the same company. So yes, what do you do? But you have an option. You can say, hey, I'm paying too much, too much on internet and cable together. So you can have your service provider terminate your cable service and you can keep your internet service and then you can order the equipment and have it set up so that instead of paying what, what's the average, Chris? I'm, I'm sure you've done your market analysis. What's the average does... Uh, what's the average monthly fee for cable? I mean, I, I, know, I know I pay a lot of money. I mean, I, I pay $148 a month currently. But what is the average, you would say? I mean, if you are removing the cable component to replace it with, say, with Global Net ITV. Right. So, um, uh, they came for most cable companies uh, today on an average uh, cost per home, um, cost anywhere from um, 90, 98 to $124 uh, a month. So that's roughly uh, almost 75% of what you will be paying with us. Um, and, and most you know, uh, of our customers uh, that we get, uh, they, they do tell us and let us know that they're paying more. And we just let them to do the math for themselves and come to realize that. Yeah, people know uh, they're paying more. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Like I told you, I'm paying $148 and I'm going to abandon mine and, and go to, why do I have to pay that much when I can pay 16 bucks a month for the exact same thing? Uh, another thing, uh, Chris, is that yeah. some somebody's asking, my big brother um, uh, is asking, Mr. Maya, Charles Maya, he wants to know uh, up to how many TVs, uh, television sets can you hook up to this? Do oh, you need to yes. have, uh, for each TV, TV, do you need to have an equipment per television or what? Explain, please. Right. So, um, unlike your traditional uh, cable that you have in your home, uh, per TV, you need one of our equipment. Um, and so what we do is most, most of our customers who have about three or four television in, in the home, uh, what we do is we do prorate uh, your third and your fourth box. So you wouldn't be paying the same $150 for each box, but as long as you have more than three or three TV in your house or at least four, uh, we do do the prorating. But what we, we also try to be mindful for of is we tell our customers, if you want to get that prorated cost, then you, you get all of the equipment together. Otherwise, if you're going to get it one at a time, then you end up paying just uh, the actual cost for that. That's wonderful. So the other day, I had to get a new cable box from my service provider for the TV in my bedroom and I had to pay for it. It was not free. It Correct. cost me over a hundred dollars. In fact, the installation and everything, even though I did the installation myself, but the total package went up to about $180. Yeah. And I paid for the shipment. So uh, this is the same thing. For every TV you have, you have to have a box for it. Period. That's the way it works. So it works like that with 
all the service providers in the U.S. that I know of. So it's no different uh, with uh, Global Net ITV. So now, Chris, clearly it can work in, in, in Liberia. It can work anywhere, depending on the internet speed, period, folks. Stop asking where it can work. It can work absolutely anywhere in the world. If you want to test your internet speed first, the first thing you want to do is test your internet speed to, to know whether your internet speed is capable of supporting Global Net I, I, ITV. How do you do it? You simply go to your search engine, Google or Yahoo or Bing or whatever it is you use, and you type in speedtest.net. That's all you, all you do because your phone or your computer is presumably already hooked up to your Wi-Fi, right? So you just put speedtest.net uh, and you click follow the simple instruction and within seconds, you should know your internet speed. And to use Global Net ITV, you should have minimum internet speed of 40 megabytes per second. That's a download speed. Is it, Chris? Download speed, right? Yeah. Yes, uh, that's the download speed. And, and quickly, uh, Henry, I just wanted to throw uh, this in there. So, because I, I don't want, you know, potential customers thinking when they run the speed test uh, and the speed test is now up to 40 uh, meg, that they will be wondering, oh, uh, maybe I wouldn't be able to get the service. And so most of our customers, what we're seeing and, and some of our staff, we always, you know, talk about this. Uh, when they run the speed test, they, they realize that the speed test is way below sometimes and they're paying even more for the internet service. So the only thing that they have to do is to call the internet service provider and say, I'm paying uh, $80 for, you know, uh, maybe 100 meg and I'm only getting 30 or I'm only getting, um, you know, less than 40. So it's the responsibility of the internet service provider to uh, make sure that they troubleshoot the uh, problem with them and and get that resolved. So, but most of the time they call us back and say, man, I was paying for our internet service all these years and I was getting way, way less speed. So it's not a big deal. We are also in the, at the moment trying to work with uh, some internet service providers in that we've identified in the US uh, and in the UK as well, where we can recommend our cost, potential customers to that they can sign up with them or look into seeing if they can switch over uh, internet service. Good, good. So, there you have it folks. Make sure your speed is good. And if your speed is not good, you can upgrade your speed. That's the amazing part. And you can drop your cable service and you can order their box. The website is there, I just posted, it's globalnetitv.com, it's there, globalnetitv.com, go to the website, phone numbers are there, email addresses, you can contact them, you don't need to ask me for a number, I don't like it, I don't like when people do that, I provide the information, globalnetitv.com, I don't want any anybody to call me to ask me, I, you just go there, it's very, very simple, especially when people hear it. You just go there, you get it. It's very, very simple. You don't need to ask me for his phone number. It's already on the website. Everything is there. These people are effective, efficient in, 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 in providing the service. Now, Chris is also looking into setting up um, a station here in the thing. When I say station, like a distribution place where uh, people will have the, uh, the equipment here in the U.S. and the other parts of the world as well as their market expands, as they get more customers there, and where people can for easy access or delivery, or fast delivery to their customers. Chris, how is that going? Um, that's going pretty well. Um, so there are a few states uh, that we, at the moment, have agents in those states, and that's where um, our agent um, um, and affiliate package comes through. So. There are some potential customers that have used our service over the years and said, you know, we like to resell uh, your service. And that's how we've been expanding very aggressively. So because we want to make sure that we're delivering um, the service to our customers within three to five business days. 
So we now have been in, in um, some training with, uh, as we get more uh, affiliates and agents, as I would call, um, and our distribution is now becoming much more easier. That's wonderful, wonderful. And Chris, um, you have tens of thousands, tens of thousands of librarians in the United States alone. And there are many thousands of them are listening to you this morning. And will listen to you at some point during the course of the day. When they listen to the show later on today. Uh, they are a huge market, Chris. A huge market, first of all. They already have television service, and everybody's looking to save money. Every everybody is looking to save money, and on top of that, not only is the service good, but it is provided by a Liberian, a, a Liberian-owned business operating out of Canada. What do you have to say to these people? Well, uh, uh, thanks again, Henry, for that. Um, so, what I like to say is, you know. Um, in 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 this whole journey, uh, when we when we started six years ago, um, we started you know just as small as from the house, and we started to identify the key component uh, on how we can drive our business to make our services much uh, affordable and efficient and effective. So what we've been doing over the years is uh, improving on our service as we go. Uh, and we want to make sure that we can reach, you know, uh, uh, the home of every librarian. Um, even though our business is not normally, uh, uh, you know, built on only uh, librarians, but Africans in general, as well as our, you know, Canadians and American and European customers. But what I'd say is we have thousands, like you mentioned, of librarians across the U.S., in Liberia, in Europe. Um, that are using cable services and people are really getting, you know, sync up into bills when it comes to cable television. How many times do you watch cable services, you know, a day, times a week? And you're paying, you know, a self-presence price uh, cost for uh, the cable services, you know. So why don't you uh, get an affordable service and much more uh, um, content than what you're getting today? When you want to watch sports, you have to always get extra uh, cost in terms of, you know, sports like this uh, Premier League, uh, NBA, uh, NFL, you know, you're watching the Super Bowl. So why don't you sign up with um, a librarian business, you know, then, then join the thousands of dollars or hundreds of dollars out there and, you know, you're struggling every, every month. To pay, so we we want to make sure that we can reach you know the homes of every librarian as well as the businesses of, of every librarian and, and all your um, listeners out there. So this is not only on residential services; we do also provide services to businesses okay. and hotels as well. All right, Chris, thank you very much, folks. Uh, uh, now, folks, I don't know how many times I have to say this. This service works absolutely anywhere in the world. As long as you have compatible internet service, please don't ask the question again whether it works in Michi Michigan, whether it works in, 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 in Brazil, whether it works in Russia. It works in absolutely any country. As long as you have the internet speed that's compatible. There are people in Liberia who use Orange Internet Service who are sub subscribers. There are people in Liberia who use Liptelco and they are on the service. So if it works in Liberia, it can certainly work in America. There are right people in America who are using the service. Again, I have to say this. Someone else is going to come. Oh, does it work in my state? Does it work in Delaware? Yes! It works in Delaware. Could you please stop asking that? It works everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. That is a convenience. I have it and I tried it and it works. And so we've been planning, preparing this thing. We have the jingle. It's going to be running on the Costa show. Uh, you'll be hearing it. I will, I will post a flyer at some point today. Chris, I hope you kind of remind me to, to do that. The phone numbers are on it. The email address is on it. The uh, web address is also there. 
and thousands of people can see the flyer and you can get in touch with them and you can order your box and set it up in a few simple steps within a few minutes and you're on the go. It works absolutely anywhere. Please don't ask the question again. Absolutely anywhere it works there. And it's 100% Nigerian owned and you'll be saving yourself money. So imagine this, folks. We always talk about promoting Liberia. And we, we often say this is lip service. Most, most of us, we don't really mean it. I'm going to challenge you. Most of you in the United States, in Europe, have cable service. You're paying lots of money for it, but you need it, so you don't have a choice. You have to pay. But imagine you can enjoy the same internet, I mean the same television service, the same channels, football, uh, American football, soccer, as they call it here in America, and basketball, and you name it, everything, CNN, Al Jazeera, BBC, the whole nine yards, and, you, you, and, and for a fraction of the, of the price. So not only is the service good, not only is it affordable, but it is owned by a librarian. Now that, to me, sums it all up. It is owned. It is owned by librarians. So you're patronizing a business that is effective, that is good, that is way affordable, much much better than what you currently have, and it is librarian owned. So you go look it up. Give them a call today. Globalnetitv.com. That is a website. The phone number is there. The email address is there. And you can have your package mailed out to you ASAP. Now, Chris, our time is up. I'm going to yeah. give you one minute to close up. And officially, this product has been launched on the Castle Show. And uh, you can look it up, get the website, go, go online, get the phone number, get in touch with them. We're playing the jingle every day. And so you're good to go. Now, Chris, I'm going to, I'm going to ask you um, one last uh, uh, just one minute, please. Close up every day. The jingle will be on every single morning, just before the gospel show comes on, and you can hear it. And you, you can get information about it, and you can get in touch with, 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 with them, Chris. Yep, one yep. minute, anyways. Uh, yeah, thanks uh, again very much, uh, uh Henry, for uh, bringing me on your show, and also I uh, appreciate uh, the uh, promotion we, we do. Um, I need to uh, promote uh, Liberian owned business. Um, I, you know, I always say that uh, you know a lot of Liberians uh, that are across the globe um, have different type of businesses, but I want to make sure that I'm you know pushing out my business uh, so that Liberians as well can enjoy my services, not only foreign nationals but uh, Liberians as well. Um, that, that Liberians that have you know. Um, restaurants, uh, hotels, uh, you know, bars, um, that we can provide services uh, to them as well, like sports bar. Uh, we do provide those uh, services to businesses and, you know, uh, come aboard, try out uh, our services. You wouldn't regret it uh, because we've been, you know, working um, uh, tirelessly, you know, for months and months and months and years to get where we are today. It has not been an easy rock. But we, you know, we are working our way, and we're making sure that we're providing uh, better and quality services, as well as superior customer service support. Uh, one of the things that we try to do, and you know, my staff and myself, uh, we try to make sure that we are providing superior customer service because uh, our customer is our number one priority. Thank you, so thank, thank you very, very much, much for folks. Our viewers uh, listening to us, and we look forward to. Uh, having um, um, our librarians uh, on board as uh, value customers. All right, Chris. Thank you very, very much. And as, as, I, as I said, folks, this is the official launch of Global Net ITV on the Costa Show. Uh, we're going to be running the ad every day, five, five times a week. And the website, the web address is right here. I paint, I, I paint it uh, on, a, on the under the live feed, so you can, you can, you can, you can find it. Is uh, www.globalnetitv.com please don't call me to ask me questions everything is there and everything you need to know is there and very simple 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 process thank you so much god bless you chris uh we're going to talk again thank you very much and thanks for having me you're most welcome
Well, boy, I got day. You have it. This is how I like to bring this uh, uh, down from my end. Bye bye. Uh, uh. Yeah. Yeah, get on call me and ask me. People can call me. Oh, my man, I want to register with the COP. Please send me the website. Ah. Oh, that thing is so annoying. The thing is so simple. We told you the web address is councilofpatriots.com. Just go type it in. In Google or whatever you're using, you will find it. But they can call me to ask me to send them the website. Council, I don't understand Liberians. Jesus Christ. Huh? You want you want a letter on me? Just find a way to letter on me. Don't be asking me to send you simple things. Send me the website. It's so annoying. I hate it when people do it to me. I'm telling you now. 